Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. And by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Welcome back to Community Hotline. Thanks for staying with us. We're at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And now I'm very happy to introduce my last guest of the night. She was uh, uh, the first Latina to serve in the Oregon House of Representatives, where she was active uh, working with issues affecting women, um, working families, the environment. Um, she is now a Multnomah County Commissioner and continues that work. And I'm very happy to introduce you to Jessica Vega-Peterson. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for yeah, having me today. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. So you are, represent District 3 in East County. That's right. And you live in that area, correct? Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes. So, um, so the Multnomah County Commission is divided up into different districts. District 3 is really a lot of Southeast and East Portland. So right. it starts all the way west to Cesar Chavez, but goes all the way east to 148th in okay. Portland. Um, and really goes from I-84 all the way south to the county line. So it's, it's a, a pretty, pretty big district. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty big yeah. district. And a pretty po heavily populated Populated, populated district too. Yeah. So how long have you been in office then for Multnomah County Commission? So um, going on 11 months now. So okay. it's, I was sworn in uh, right at the beginning of January yeah. and have been doing this for almost a year. So how has it been? Has it been a ride that you've enjoyed? <laughs> yeah, I've actually, I really, really love working at the county. Um, Multnomah County is a really special place to work and uh, the work that all of the employees do every day, the way that we interact with the community and all the, just kind of the scope of the issues that yeah. we work on, it's pretty incredible and I feel yeah. really lucky to be there. You know, we Metro East videotapes all the city yes. uh, council meetings and, and, and uh, or the um, commission meetings and it's, you know, it's, so I always see them on our channels and watch them and it's, yeah. it's, um, it's just mostly all women. Yeah, it's, it's most, all women. It is all, it is all, all women, women, isn't it? Five Which women. is just amazing. Yeah. It is. Just love, I kind of love that. Yeah, so when, um, so there were three of us who were new in January mm -hmm. and so we were um, elected an all woman board but also the first majority minority board too. That's right, yeah. that's right. So that was historic. It, it, it is historic. Yeah. It kind of makes you proud of Portland, doesn't it's it? It's very in, proud, in, yeah. in Multnomah County. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background. I mentioned that uh, that you were with the House of Representatives. Tell me, um, what else have you done in your, yeah. in your career? Well, so you had mentioned that, you know, I live out here in East mm -hmm. Portland, and um, and that's true. So we, my, um, we actually live, my husband and I have two kids. I'm a mom with two kids. And um, we've lived in the neighborhood for like going on 11 years yeah. now. Um, and so I just, I love my community and I really got involved. Um, you know, into this whole political thing through volunteer work and working in the community and my neighborhood association. That's um, so, I think a yeah. lot of people start yeah. with their neighborhood association. It's a great place to get a start. It's, and you really learn about um, what's happening right. um, with the issues that you care about. Um, before that, I actually worked in the technology sector. So I worked in the um, tech sector for startups and different companies for about 14 years okay. before I decided to, to try this. Throw your hat um, in the ring. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I find that um, neighborhood associations can really, they really do have some power. Yeah. Don't they? And, I mean, and really dedicated people who are concerned yeah, who about really care. Uh, the community. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's why I got involved in there because I was really concerned about what was happening in my neighborhood, what was happening in the community. Um, as a mom with young children, yes. one of the things that was so frustrating to me was that the fact that I couldn't actually like take my kids in the stroller and go all the way down my block because we didn't have consistent sidewalks on the, Ooh, on the street so where I live. Yeah, and it yeah. wasn't safe because we were ended up having to go to the street and that happens for so many people who live um, you know, in our neighborhood. And you don't notice that so much until you have kids yeah. and you push them in a stroller. Mm -hmm. I know I push my granddaughter in a stroller and I know yeah. if, there's not a, if there's not a sidewalk, it's scary. Yeah. You don't want to put your kids at risk. I mean, that's your heart. Yeah, it's and, it's, and it's kids, it's 
um, people who have uh, trouble getting around. There's a lot of folks who use um, the bike lanes in East Portland that I know is for motorized wheelchairs because, again, they can't um, go on the sidewalks right, without right. having to come out. Right. So um, and that's not the safest thing to do, you know? Right. Yeah. So what do you do about that? Yeah, so I got involved, right? I, I got involved with the Neighborhood Association, started working with some great folks there, um, got involved locally with um, the, my political party, and then when the... Um, when the um, state representative seat opened up, I decided that this was a chance to really, you know, put some action behind the words right. and the causes that I believed in. And so I took a risk and did it. And I'm so glad I did because yeah. we have been able to work on so many really important issues, um, you know, like pedestrian safety, like making sure that we've got investments in sidewalks um, and, and, you know, really focusing on improvements to some of the high crash corridors that we have in East right. County and East right. Portland. Because so. there are certain areas that are just notorious yeah. for for being unsafe um was that a scary thing to do to go into politics for the first time oh my gosh of course it was <laughs> probably the, the scariest and one of the hardest things yeah. i've ever had to do you know you go in you know i didn't you know come out of like a, a you know a, a lot of political yeah. yeah political family or a lot right. of political experience um so i didn't really know what i was getting into but you know when it comes down to it it's about um you know talking to people about who you are and why you're doing this and making the connections mm -hmm. um and use, you know, using those community connections with the, the issues and the people that you've been working on to really help form this space, who can support you and help move you forward with right, this. And that right. was you know, one of the best, the best experiences of going through it. And it was, it was the same thing when I decided to move from the state to the county. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we work on a lot of, we worked on a really, a lot of big issues at the state. We did some really big things um, like paid sick time, raising the minimum wage, working on, cli working on climate issues, and that was mm. great. But, um, but I really wanted to get back to working at that community level of having impact really on More grassroots day -day. level, yeah. I mean, as far as, um, you're, you're right there with the people that you're affecting yeah. directly. Yeah, and you really see that at the county. Yeah. I mean, we all know how much our region is growing. We know like there are you know more and more people living in Multnomah County, yeah. living in our region. And I wanna make sure that as we grow, um, we're growing in a way that's fair to everybody and that right. every community, every neighborhood has a chance to thrive. And that's yeah. really what I focused on in my work in the at the county so far. Yeah, good. Yeah. I think it's one of the pluses of having I shouldn't say this, but so many women yeah. <laughs> that are involved because yeah. there's a different perspective yeah. sometimes, I think, especially as mothers, you know. Um, you know, yeah. dads are great too, you know, but in there I don't know, I think there's just a different a different perspective yeah. being a well, mom. I mean I think you look at traditionally what's what's happened and who's had power and who's had you know, in the whether it's in the boardroom or in the um, you know, at the in the legislature or in the political realm. And we've had one perspective, we've had one views for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. And so now we're opening up and we're bringing more voices to the table, more perspectives, and that's just a good thing. Because it's a good thing. Yeah, yes. I mean, that means the policies that we, we work on, the issues that we raise are really reflective of a broader segment of right. our community. Well, our viewpoints and our perspectives are are there, they're, yeah. they're being represented, yeah. and that's, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were talking about the sidewalks and, and safety for pedestrians, and, yeah. and I noticed that you were just recently honored uh, by Oregon Walks. Oh yes, is that right? I just saw that today. Yes. So you were. What was the honor? What was the? They gave you a. Um, I can't remember what that. What it, what it was. It was a. I don't remember the exact name, but it's. Um, but it was for the walk that we've done in trying to, um, you know, push pedestrian safety and right, safe routes right. to school, and really making the investments. Whether it was, you know, getting money in the legislature for. Um, sidewalks in East Portland and Powell Boulevard to adding crosswalks in um, East Portland and East County, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we did this year um, in the Multnomah County budget. That's we did so that. important. Yeah. Well, transportation overall, is, yeah. it seems to be important to you. That seems like one of the issues that's Im important to you. Yeah. Um, you've been doing some work lately um, with bridges and, and other transportation issues. Tell me about what you're working on oh, right sure. now. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, Multnomah County really does work on a broad range of issues from mm -hmm. you know the animal shelter to the libraries yeah. to our clinics. I think a lot of people um, don't realize how diverse the what the things are that you work on. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, there's so much. Um, but one of the things that we do is we're responsible for six of the bridges that cross the Willamette River. So those are the ones that are that are actually in Multnomah County, I yeah. guess? There, so. Yeah, so there's some that are owned by um, the Oregon Department of Transportation, uh, one's oh. wrote, um, owned by the railroads, one's owned by TriMet. But the the main ones that you that you know people take probably on an unusual basis: Burnside, Hawthorne, Morrison, uh, Selwood. Um, 
and um, Broadway Bridge, and mm -hmm. those all are under the responsibility of um, Multnomah County. And so there's oh, yeah. been. I don't think I knew that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's one of it's one of those kind of old things that was decided back in the day, and it's just kind still, of been still there. Yeah. So we have a really wonderful bridge team um, at Multnomah County, and uh, one of the things that they've been working on is making sure that we have one of those bridges that's seismically resilient. We all know that. So the, just one. So that means none of them are. Well, no, that's is that what no, you're saying? No, 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 no. Well, we, <laughs> yeah. so, um, so there's a lot of bridges. So the, the, you're probably familiar with the Selwood Bridge project mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. yes, so yes. that is going to, you know, that is something that happened recently that's, um, that was seismic resiliency was built in part of that. The new Tillicum Bridge that right, TriMet right, has, right? right. Um, but we have some of these legacy bridges um, that aren't. And one of those that we know isn't is the Burnside Bridge. And that's important because that's one of, uh, it's on a lifeline corridor. So the Metro government mm -hmm. said, hey, Burnside is a lifeline corridor for our region. It goes all the way from Gresham, all the way oh, up to Washington Bridge. County. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is a really big um, deal. And the fact is the bridge crossing the river isn't seismically resilient right mm -hmm. now. So there's this, um, uh, project that we've been working on the earthquake ready Burnside bridge to say okay what do we need to what do we need to do to make this bridge ready um, to be that lifeline corridor to be a place where we're going to be able to get people and uh, emergency so when vehicles. the earthquake happens when it, which happens, it will yeah it'll be one that you can get across to get yeah. services from one side to the other. Yes, yeah. so we're in the early stages of that, what those options are, what's the best choice, and then we go into an environmental study and then hopefully, you know, building something that would be um, moving on so where we have a replacement that is resilient. And um, it's great because we bring a lot of stakeholders together. This is obviously like a very busy it's part huge. of the city. Yeah. Yes, it um, is. So we've been working on that. So would that mean removing the existing bridge and building another one? Would it mean shoring up the existing one? Or do you not know yet what that looks like? I think all of those things have been talked about, including you know, one of the possibilities was even like a tunnel. I mean, they're looking, everything's yeah. on the table at yeah. this point. Okay. And they're putting together a report that will be um, ready in about a year okay. in 2000 and fall of 2018 that, that gives a rec recommendation on what that best option looks sure, it like. It takes a lot of work to yeah. get those plans made. And it's a cool bridge. I love our bridges mm -hmm. in Portland. I love oh, being I Bridge know. City, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you hate to think about anything happening to them. You brought a video. Tell us yeah. what this video, what we're going to see on this video. So what this video is, is basically what would, it's a simulation of what could happen during the Cascadia earthquake event and um, it's it's kind to of the startling bridge or just to um, to the Burnside Bridge specifically okay. so you'll get to see it's pretty it's pretty shocking the first time you see it um, but I think it does a really good job of saying this is this is the intensity of what we're expecting to have happen Ooh, okay yeah. let's take a look at that okay, now. let's see any day without warning the Cascadia earthquake could strike and forcefully shake the region for several minutes under the west end of the bridge, concrete columns containing very little steel reinforcement will fail early. Weak, unstable soil causes permanent shifting and cracking of the shoreline pier. The pier sinks and rotates, causing the truss to collapse. Thick spans become unseated, creating a barrier to river traffic. Weak soils and inadequate foundations cause settlement and damage to the river piers. The earthquake breaks the locks that connect the spans together, allowing the draw spans to lift and shake independently. The internal support holding the draw span fractures and the span drops into the pier. The draw span truss members break and fall into the river, blocking ship passage. is a city of bridges. Our bridges have a rich history and provide important connections across the Willamette River. Since 1926, the Burnside Bridge has served us well. To take us across the river for another 100 years, it needs an upgrade. The Burnside Bridge is part of our region's lifeline corridor. This is an emergency transportation route that will help our city recover after an earthquake damages other major roads and bridges. The Burnside Bridge should be a reliable cross-river connection in downtown Portland. In the event of a disaster, a cross-river connection is even of more importance to emergency responders. We're looking at how to make this bridge service for another hundred years. It'll take us years to plan and prepare the Burnside Bridge to be our earthquake emergency crossing. So we need to get started now and make steady progress toward that goal. 
We can't do this without you. Please join the conversation and learn more at burnsidebridge.org. Woo, <laughs> that's really powerful. Yeah. That really tells a story. So thank you for doing this work and keep up the good work. We're just out of, about out of time, Jessica. We have a few pictures. Maybe we can kind of bring those up um, okay. while we're talking here. You can just kind of share a little bit. Um, and, and just tell me what other things that you're working on that we should know about. So, you know, we're doing a lot of work on climate and sustainability. That's mm. a big thing, a priority for the county. And really looking at environmental health in, in general, which means clean air and clean water and what that looks like. So mm. my office has been working on that. And I think finally, like, we do a lot of investment in Multnomah County with young kids and so early learning and investment there is Good. something that I've been working a lot on and love to come back and talk more I about I would love things. that too. We're looking at these pictures where there was a picture there of uh, the, the lack of sidewalks which we yep. know we know about so I know you're working on that issue. Yes. Which, yeah, that's and this is a road um, in Wood Village that we're actually adding sidewalks and a bike lane to oh, to make it safer for all these kids getting to school. Lovely. And yeah, and look at the you know wait for the school bus mm -hmm. and you have no sidewalk to mm -hmm. stand. Yeah, when you hear about accidents that you know, especially when it takes the kids, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad to see you're working on that. These are kids on the. What, yep. Now, what is this? They're. they're uh, they're saying we need safe oh, okay. for high school, yeah. <laughs> and they do. Yes. They do. Yes, they're they do. our future. Yep. So. And then this was um, something that we um, worked on. The city of Portland actually lowered the speed on division. We've had lots of um, really bad I accidents. <laughs> I got to check it there mm -hmm. <laughs> because well, I didn't know it had changed. Yes, so it's down to 30 now. Yeah. Um, we've had some fatalities there. Um, actually, a woman there, Kim Stone, her son, um, Joe was killed on that road in oh. 2013, so she was gracious enough to, to share her story with us. And so, you know, these are just some of the things we do working in partnership with the city to make yeah. sure that we are um, doing what we can to make our community a safer place to live and work. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, I got a ticket, but you know what? I was like, it's okay, because it should be some lower here, but I haven't known it changed. I was like, no. But I'm so glad that we have people like you and the other commissioners that are doing this work in our community. I yeah. really thank you for that. Oh, thank you so much, Monica. Yeah. And do this come back great. again. Love to. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for watching Community Hotline. You can go online and, and check out what Jessica and other commissioners are doing in our county. And you be sure to, to support them in the work they're doing because it, they're taking care of our future. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you next week. possible with generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. And by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Access Training and Television brings you a two-day masterclass like no other. Saturday, November 4th and Sunday, November 5th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Metro East offers unparalleled access to training that will take away the mystique of making a major motion picture project come to life. L.A.-based film industry pro Darren Scott, director-producer of over 20 feature films, will open his playbook on every step of the production process, from concept and financing to filming and post-production. It all happens at Metro East in Gresham. For more information about the class and how to sign up, you can go to metroeast.org slash directing masterclass. Limited scholarships are available. Lunch is provided. Parking is free. Thank you.